Ruth Bader Ginsburg once thought Colin Kaepernick's national anthem protest was really dumb compared it to like burning a flag. And so I want to, uh, you know, give my uh, opinion on uh, the article that I'm reading, and it's by Nick Jivas. And it's, of course, Fox News. So it says, I should have declined to respond. And I believe that was probably in her words while that protest was going on. And it's still going on. Now, I want to say in the beginning that there are different types of political positions that people have, no matter what background they're from. And I don't agree with everyone, and I'm sure there's other people out there that don't always agree with everyone's, you know, views for whatever the reason. And some of it has to do with tradition. Some of it has to do with what our parents taught us or or what we believe in or our personal views. Or some of us are like really patriotic and we really have... um, a dedication to the country, but at what expense? And so, you know, I did a, a video before prior to this one where, I, you know, Donald Trump's always saying, make America great again. And America was not always great for all Americans, and it still isn't. I mean, even now, if you look at what's going on, there's coronavirus, there are kids that are going back to school, there are teachers that have died. There has been more than 200,000 deaths in the U.S. And people are still contracting the disease. He's pretty much downplayed the virus and his handling has not been really that great at all. And a lot of people are um, suffering behind this. A lot of businesses have closed permanently. And so what this article is talking about, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who she's not even been you know, passed away uh, two, three weeks, and already they are trying to replace her seat. And so, like I said in the previous video, she was not really uh, respected in terms of um, the Trump administration. They were more about filling her seat so they can change the scoutist um, courts. And it's a big deal because... These people can make decisions that can pretty much change society um, for the long haul. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a good thing uh, for for all Americans, depending upon what their decisions are in politics. And this woman who was in the seat, she, she passed away from pancreatic cancer at 87. So these people hold these seats for many, many years, decades even. And so when they make decisions, the courts, the Supreme Courts, it can alter the way some laws, some policies are shaped in society. So it is a big deal. And so that's why they're hurrying, trying to get someone that is a Republican and that is conservative to fill her seat. And so this article is basically saying that when Colin Kaepernick, he was, um, I believe, a 49ers football uh, player who he took a knee during the national anthem in uh, regard to Black Lives Matter and Black people who have been victims of police brutality and, and murders and killings that have have been ongoing and speaking of that um, um, George Floyd and now what we have which is going to be very pivotal and there's a public announcement that is going to be um, soon to um, coming out on the case of Breonna Taylor and so Fox News flash it's a top headline for September 19th so this right here it says well promoting one of her books back in 2016, the late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg reportedly chastised former NFL quarterback 
Colin Kaepernick's national anthem protest where he took a knee and calling it dumb and disrespectful before comparing it to burning the flag. So some people are extremely patriotic and without regard to how it has treated all Americans in this country, if you really go into the history of how black Americans were treated, um, now we're not even going as far back as slavery, we're going to Jim Crow and, 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 and even closer to our time now that it's still going on that a lot of black Americans don't feel that this country has respected their rights, has treated them American, um, has treated them with the same respect that they do their white counterparts. And so I wouldn't expect, honestly, for Ruth Bader and some of the other people who they're extremely patriotic, even if they're a staunch liberal, to fully embrace what black Americans have went through because for one, they're not black and they haven't had the black experience in America. And so let me make that clear. Um, she, although she's an staunch um, liberal, not all liberals, um, that if they're not black or if they don't have a strong relationship with black culture, are not really full aware of the ramifications and some of the life uh, that Black Americans have had to live. Um, you only see movies, maybe you're exposed to maybe a neighbor and it's still not enough because when you don't walk in the shoes of individuals, you really don't get the full spectrum of what is going on. And sometimes it's easy for people to pass off killings and shootings even if you see so many of them happening back to back and close together as isolated incidences, because it's not happening to people of your background and your culture or where you come from or your neighborhood. And so let me make that clear. So I'm full aware that this woman, she's still at the end of the day, a white woman and white women that were in those Supreme court seats, um, that if you are not really in tune with what has happened in black America to black females, to black people, to black males that are getting killed by and gunned down by law enforcement, the sanctioned violence that happens here in America based on race and based on who people are. A lot of times these people are far out of touch and far removed from the plights of black Americans and what they have experienced. And it's easy for them to pass these protests off as just being violent um, disruptions, but they aren't. There are reactions and they could become violent because people feel that their needs have not been met for all Americans. And so let me, let me be uh, very, um, <coughs> straightforward with that. So Ginsburg was being interviewed by the Yahoo's Katie Couric weeks before 2016 presidential election concerning how she felt about the San Francisco 49er quarterback and others that are refusing to stand for the national anthem during the game. So I think it's really dumb of them, Ginsburg replied. And um, I would, I would not. However, she said she wouldn't would I arrest them? No, she wouldn't arrest people, she added. I think it's dumb and disrespectful. And I would have the same answer if you asked me about the flag burning as well. And so I think it's terrible. And so everybody has their own opinions and their own views based on their upbringing and where they come from and who they are as a person in this country. So be mindful of that. So I think it's a terrible thing to do, but I wouldn't lock a person up for doing it. And I would point out how ridiculous it seemed to me to do such an act. And so that is an honest answer from somebody who has not had the black experience, who isn't black, who doesn't know what people of that culture are dealing with or faced with, especially if it's not happening to them. 
uh, directly and they're removed from these environments. They're not living amongst people who are having to live this life every day. So Kaepernick responded to her quotes after the interview saying it was disappointing to hear that a Supreme Court justice called a protest against injustices and oppression stupid and dumb. And I believe that I am more in line with Colin Kaepernick on that statement. Um, so the Bill Clinton appointee walked back her comments days later. However, when a statement was released by the Supreme Court information officer addressing the issue, according to Fox News 4. So some of you have inquired about a book interview in which I've asked how I felt about Colin Kaepernick and the other NFL players who refused to stand for the national anthem. The statement read, so barely aware of the incident. Okay, so this sounds as though somebody's trying to speak on her behalf, but also trying to get her reply that she was barely aware of the incident and its pur purpose. And my comments were inappropriately dismissive and harsh. And so I should have declined to respond. So that was in her, her what would have been words. So Ginsburg passed away Friday at the age of 87 from complications stemming from an ongoing battle with pancreatic cancer. So Trump's 2020 campaign released a statement Sunday saying that he will nominate a woman to fill that Supreme Court seat that is left open following her death. So voters elected Donald J. Trump in 2016, gave Republicans an expanded majority in 2018. So the people already have spoken. Communications Director Tim Murtaugh said in a statement, so Senate Republicans expected to consider the president nominee before a November election and have publicly stated their intention to, to hold the confirmation vote without delay per Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, which is a Republican of um, Kentucky, I believe. <clears throat> So speaking of that, we have a public announcement that should be coming out soon, if not today, um, this week sometime, that basically is going to um, prepare us for what the outcome was on the decisions made in terms of the Beyond Taylor case. Um, I read an article, I have a previous video before the, um, this one, this basically lays out the details of that. And um, stay tuned for that. So in saying this, um, my condolences to Ruth Bader and some of the good works that she has contributed to. But what I would say is, is that you have to realize that a lot of people, although they may have some good or well intentions, a lot of times when they don't live the life of another individual or have the same set of experiences, you can't expect them to understand everything that a person is going through. Um, however, they would have to have an open mind. And the only thing that you can hinge on is the fact that the person is liberal and that possibly they would have an open mind to understand the plights of other uh, Americans in the country and how they've been treated. And like I said, when they use the term make America great again, even back in this time that they claim that it was great, it was not great for all Americans. And like I said, my mother, she had grew up in the Jim Crow era. She told me how that was. And it, what she told me, it wasn't great. It wasn't great for black Americans here in the U.S. in the, the 50s and 60s. And so if that's what Trump is referring to, it, make America great again was only great for a certain select group here in America, and that was white Americans that basically hinged on that, that term of um, making America white again, and basically um, catering to a dominant class of individuals of Americans. And so that was not a great time for black Americans. It wasn't a great time for Asian Americans. It wasn't a great time for Latin Americans. It wasn't a great time for anybody who was not considered white. And so that's why I would say that when you hear these type of articles or these type of things, I'm not surprised that somebody, even if they claim to be liberal or they claim to be um, someone that is in the middle, if they want to say, if you would, or somebody that 
you know, may hinge on being a Democrat, that if they're white and if they're, you know, middle class, upper class, or if they're even white and they lived in a different environment and with a different set of criteria, their parents are patriotic, maybe they had a different lifestyle, they probably would not understand what it is like to live in America being a black person and how that is. Because like I said, even when we were kids, they did not teach us a lot about our own history. You had to go out and find that for yourself or you had your parents, you would tell you things or you'd watch their experiences and how they were treated on their jobs or how they were treated in their workplace, what kind of education they had or acquired, if they were allowed to acquire education. Right now there's a fight for affirmative action and that's coming about again. You have some black people who, if they're from a better um, financial background where maybe somehow their parents were able to acquire money or maybe they had money, a little more money than the next black American, they may speak against affirmative action. So everybody's background, their traditions, their their beliefs that what their experiences might have been altogether different than what the, the, the majority of what some people have experienced. And so when we see these shootings, they're not isolated incidences. When we see black women and black men being killed, black children being killed, and officers being exonerated right now, they want you to take a lot of pity for the officers that have been, um, the two officers that were ambushed, which it is sad because now their families are suffering. And like I said, violence only begets violence. When you use and enforce uh, punishable violence, then it, it brings forth more violent acts to come and it's sad. And so everybody's hurting. There's no winning in any of that. And so I'm not for any of the violence. What I do know is that when you punish people for being black, when you punish people for being poor, when you kill and gun down black residents because of the fact that you feel that they're inferior to you as a people, then you're going to get a reaction and it is not going to be the one that you intend not going to be submissive because we do live in a country that's supposed to be a democracy. And so if you have people that are being mistreated and they're being abused and they're being punished just for being who they are, then you're going to get resistance. And so that's what I'm saying. And so having said this, I'm going to let this video go, but I'm not surprised not one bit. You see this outpour of all these people for this woman and I want to remind you that where is the outpour for black Americans that have been gunned down by officers? You see this outpour of consideration for law enforcement who they have, you probably can count on one hand, the officers that you're seeing that had that incident happen. But how many black Americans within a span of this year have we seen being murdered on national TV or out in social media that is wide open for all to see? And where is the outcry for the justice in, in this? And this is the thing. And then we have this virus and they're going to allow kids to go back to school. However, you have this um, leadership that is saying that, oh, the kids are safe, but what about our teachers who may have pre-existing illnesses, they may be older, and they have to suffer going back to work and possibly losing their life because of the mishandlings of people that are supposedly in leadership who have downplayed this coronavirus. You have 200,000 people that have died in the U.S. and still people who are getting sick and contracting to this, this disease that yet they have not come to any conclusion of how to stop this. Um, so this is this world we live in and this is the times that we are coming to 
You have people that are even from your own background. We have it in black culture. We have it in the Latin, the Asian culture. People who claim, even in gay culture, saying that they support Trump 2020, even though there have been multiple laws put out against transgender people, multiple laws put out against gay people, but yet you have gay men that say they support Trump 2020. You have black people who are getting gunned down in the street, yet you have black, some black people saying they support Trump. You have Latin people that there's TPS, um, people that are coming from other countries that just want to work and they want a place so they can raise their family safely. But yet, this world has not proven that. The way we have this virus, the way it's been handled, the way people have been treated here in America, they are trying to pass a, a rule to send people back even if they're not bad people that are doing anything or any malice, they just want to work and have families and live a decent life. They are walking back into time and, and pu pushing the clock back into time to this make America great again, which was not great for all Americans. And so this is the times we're living in, you guys. It's very very pivotal and that is the reason why they are rushing to try to fill the seat of this woman because they were basically closing down the uh, Sup uh, Supreme Court saying that because of the virus they weren't going to be in session but now they want to open things up and hurry and make a nomination as quick as possible just to get a conservative a staunch conservative in there so they basically can turn back the hands of time and make this this thing called Make America Great Again happen in real time, in our time. So that's what times we're living in. That's how serious it is. And so we see what happened with the, the mail. We see how they tried to take the machines out, tried to go back and do the same thing they did back what we read about how black Americans that lived in the South, and they still did that, where they made it hard for them to vote. Um, they make it hard for you to, to go to a voting place. They know this virus is happening and you're, you're in fear or you're worried that you could contract this virus if you have long lines and people trying to go at the last minute to vote. And you don't know if your vote's going to count. And so the mail-in vote, they make it almost impossible for black people to vote who are able to. And so this is how you know what times we're living in, people. So you have to take this serious. So you young people out there, if you don't read much, you need to start getting yourself organized so that you can read about where you come from and who your people are and what they have went through to get you to where you are. And that's the reason why things are the way they are. There's always, when you wonder why things are the way they are, take a walk back in time and see where it started. That will tell you what time it is. Having said that, I'm gonna let this video go, but stay tuned because there is more to come. Like, comment, subscribe, and thanks for listening.